So what's up guys? It is a beautiful day outside, nice sunny weather, but it is crazy windy. So what I'm going to got in store for you today is not going to be flying. I know I did a quick tip yesterday and we're going to do another one of those today because um, if you if you paid attention yesterday, you would have noticed uh, that I complained about some oscillations that I said were not prop wash that were on the yaw axis and I thought I had an unbalanced motor. So since it's too windy to go fly, we're talking like 20 knot winds gusting to 30, maybe even 40 knots at times, um, which it, yeah, it's roughly miles per hour, close enough. People are going to complain in the comments, I know, but I look at the aviation METARs and TAFs when I'm looking at weather. Whatever. I'm a nerd. Um, okay, so since I had the issue with my um, with one of my motors, I thought that I would show you guys what I do to, um, to diagnose if it's a motor issue, and if so, just which motor and how bad is it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, because um, eventually we are going to plug in both a battery and we're going to plug into the computer. And I'm just going to say this right now. Rule of thumb, if you are ever plugging a battery into your quad and the USB port, always take the props off. I don't care if you're just changing some tune stuff, take the props off. Or unplug the battery. Don't ever plug in both the battery and the USB with props on. Bad things happen. Once you got your props off, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a good close look at these motors. So what you're going to want to do is just spin the motor in your finger here, in your fingers, and, uh, and you're gonna look at that gap between the bell and the, um, and the base of the motor. So let's just give you a good look at one here. And you can see that one, that one doesn't look too bad. Might have a little bit of a variation in that gap. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the, that gap to change in width. And if it's changing in width, what that's gonna tell you is that you've probably got like a bent shaft that's gonna be screwing things up. So let's look at this one here. I don't know if that's gonna translate into the footage there, but I can definitely see this rear left motor has some variation in that gap between the, um, the bell and the base. So let's look at the front right, or the front left, I'm sorry. Not seeing a whole lot there. Might be a little bit on that front right one. Yeah, it's got some scuffs from concrete. Um, if you'll remember from the time when it was, what, what did I call that video? Um, shredding Scraggle. Yeah, 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 with the steel on the cover photo. If you remember this clip. <laughs> boom. Um, you know probably what happened to this rear left motor. That, uh, that brick pillar was pretty rough on it. To get an idea of just how much of an oscillation that, uh, that off balance is causing and whether or not I want to change the motor because of it, what I like to do is I will plug in a battery, plug it into the computer, and go into the um, GUI, the Betaflight software, because uh, this is a dodo board with beta flight. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spool up each motor individually while I hold the arm that that motor is on. And you can feel the vibrations that are being passed from the motor down the arm into the rest of the frame and the flight controller as a result and causing those oscillations. So I am going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's see here. Yep, full battery. Let's get it on the GUI. Okay, so now we're going to go over here to the motors tab and uh, go ahead and plug in that battery and enable um, the ability to spin each motor. And now I'm just going to hold each motor's arm individually. So number one, very little to no vibrations coming from number one, number two. Yeah, I thought that it looked a little bit off. I can definitely feel some vibrations, but it's not that bad. Number three. Wow, so the rear left motor that I thought was going to have the bad vibrations actually isn't my culprit. It looks like it's probably that front right motor. Number four. Little to no vibration there. Three. Wow, I am just very shocked at that. I thought for sure from the looks of them that it was going to be that... Wow. 
I thought for sure it was going to be the rear left. It is not the rear left at all. It is the front right. I don't even know which crash caused that. So I probably threw that clip in there for no dang reason. But it was a good crash, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, and that, I've, now I've narrowed it down. I know which motor is my culprit. I know exactly what I got to do now. I got to go swap out at least the bell, if not the full motor. I'm probably going to go ahead and swap out the motor. Uh, and that's how I go about figuring out just which motor. See, if I had just guessed from looking at it, I would have changed out the wrong motor. I still would have had the oscillations and wouldn't have fixed anything. Sometimes eyeballing it just isn't quite enough. Well, guys, I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please give me a like, subscribe, check out some other videos that I've got. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. I do appreciate it. If you want to find any of the gear that's on this build or any of the or any of the other things that I'm currently using, you can always find that in the links in the description below. I appreciate it, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks, guys. All right, bye.